so this area in particular, Montmartre, has been the background for a lot of films. Um, what is it about this place? One reason is a practical reason. If you want to shoot a movie on the Champs Elysees, it's very, very difficult. So Montmartre is always good. You know, you can shoot a film almost anywhere you want. You don't need permission. You can just go out with a camera. Secondly, um, with with the stairway, you could put the three dimensionality to your to your narrative. But is there something about the the small streets and the charm of this neighborhood that makes directors want to film here? It's Paris as people in 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 America think it should look like. You're going to Montmartre to, to confirm people's belief in what Paris looks like. The Du Moulin Café here on Rue Le Pique is the café where uh, a very famous movie character works. Could you tell us a little bit about the café? Yeah, it's Amélie and the most successful French film ever in the United States. It certainly put Montmartre on the map, even by, uh, by French or Parisian standards. It certainly did a lot of good to the area. And uh, this, is the, this is the place where she, where she works and uh, for many reasons the, the, the center of the film. I'm sure they could have found many, many better looking, more attractive cafes, but they went for this one. And I think it makes it sort of more authentic and more genuine. And this was also the director, uh, Jean-Pierre Jeunet. This yes, it, it apparently was his local and he decided I was going to make a film about you know, the, the people I know my local life, and that's what, 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 what he came up with. So here we are in front of the restaurant, Le Bon Franquette, a great restaurant, but also one of the most famous scenes in Funny Face with Audrey Hepburn, one of my admittedly favorite films. Um, so what happened here? What was going on? Well, every, everybody in, uh, in Funny Face has an area of Paris which they consider their own, and this happens to be the one for Audrey Hepburn, and she stands, uh, she stands here, she comes out of that street and just sings her song about Montmartre. She actually sang it too, right? She did sing that it herself. Her yes. Apparently she had a rather lovely singing voice. Studio 28, or Studio 28, here atop Montmartre is one of the most famous movie theaters here in Paris because I believe there were a couple of uh, very spectacular premieres here. So yeah, spe spectacular is, is, is the word. It was um, when Louis Buñuel and Salvador Dali, and the second film was called L'Age d'Or, and when it was premiered here in this place, the audience was packed with students from the Catholic League who uh, came equipped with uh, rotten eggs and rotten tomatoes and as soon as the movie started they, they threw them at the screen and um, so the, the premiere, the grand premiere lasted for about a minute, had to be interrupted and uh, the French government as a reaction to this um, decided to ban the film. Montmartre, of course, a great area, but are there any other neighborhoods in Paris that you really like to go to to show people where films have been produced? I love the Canal, mm -hmm. actually. It's, um, it's a very important area for, for French cinema in particular, mm -hmm. not so much for American cinema. I always say if you, if you see the Canal in a film, you can be sure it's French. Okay. But in French cinema, it means something. The, 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 the French directors al almost use the Canal in, this, in, in, in the same way that American directors use Paris to make a visual point. Mm -hmm. For French directors, the canal represents a Paris that doesn't exist anymore. A working class Paris, the Paris of you know, the intermediate war years, that sort of thing. Um, that, that's a wonderful area. 